In this video trade, we're gonna look at the long put butterfly. Perfect if you think the stock is not gonna do anything from now until expiry. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. So part of the option series is the long put butterflies. It's an options trade you can put on a spread trade where you execute a multiple different options trades to construct a kind of thesis that you want to happen. You want to pay out when a specific thesis occurs. And in this case, the thesis is that the price will not move. So let's say you've got a stock trading now at $40. You expect it to still be at $40 at some point in the future, and that's your expiry time. So how do you construct that trade? Well, one way you can do it is this long put butterfly, and it involves buying one put that's out of the money, selling two puts that are at the money, and also buying one put that's in the money. We'll look at an example in a second, but one thing to note, guys, it's got limited risk and limited reward. So as always with these option deals, is what you take with one hand, you have to give with the other, and vice versa. So we're limiting the upside, but we're also limiting the risk. So we have that kind of offset. And really what happens, because you're limiting your risk, that means that you're going to pay a little bit more for the deal, but ultimately that's what you pay for the insurance. So there's a good example, let's work it out. So let's have a look here. We're assuming that XYZ, and this, and this example's a stock, is currently trading at 40 bucks, right? It's trading at $40. And we believe that at some point in the future, at time of expiry, it doesn't really matter the date, we believe it's still gonna be $40, and we wanna get paid out as much as possible for that. Now, don't forget a put option is the right, but not the obligation to sell something at that specific price at some specific time in the future. So if we had a $30 put, we'll look at it a bit more closely in a second. In fact, let's put the dollars in here so it makes it easier for us to see what we're up to. The $30 put gives us the right, but not the obligation to sell that stock at $30 at a point in the future. And of course, that's worth it if the stock happens to be less, it's worth less if the stock happens to be higher. So let's have a look and see what we do. So first of all, and you know, there's different ways of looking at it, but in my mind, I like to look at it first and say, well, if I thought the stock wasn't gonna do anything, the first thing I'm looking at is selling these two puts at the money, because that's the strike price I want it to stay at. So here we're selling two $40 puts for $400 each, total $800. It's $400 because the price of the put is gonna be $4, and we're times it by 100 shares, because with one option contract is 100 shares. So we would receive $800 for that. That'd be a credit trade. However, we now want to add some different things and different legs to this trade. So we also are going to buy a $30 put for $100, so that's trading at a dollar. And we're also gonna buy a $50 put for $1,100. Now don't forget guys, because this is well in the money, because we're currently trading at $40, it's got an intrinsic value of $1,000, and it's got a premium of $100, whereas these have got no intrinsic value at all, it's just premium, like a $30 put, it's just pure premium. So if you think of the total for that, the total for that, the net debit for us, or how much it's gonna cost us to make this trade is 400 bucks, because it costs us 100 bucks there, we receive 800 back in, so it's 700, but we've got to fork out 1100 to buy that $50 put. So we're down $400 on the deal. Now, this is pretty much what the chart would look like at expiry and the payoff at expiry. But I want to do is I want to look at this table here and let's see where it all fits in. Now let's start off with $40 because that's exactly what we wanted to occur. Let's see what our maximum profit would be. So the $40 puts that we've sold, how much are they worth if we if the expiry is $40? You're right, they're not worth anything because you've got the right to sell something that's currently at the same price you've got the right to sell it at, it's worthless. So the value of these options is zero. And this is what these uh, values are in this table here. Not what we get out of it, but what the value of the option is. Now what's the value of the 30 puts? Again, you've got the right to sell something that's below the current price, there's no value in that, zero. The 50 puts, however, have some value, right? They've got $10 worth of value in them because it's 40, you got the right to sell something at 50, at 40, great. You've got nice thousand dollars worth of value. But don't forget, we have forked out uh, already $400 for this. And so even though we've received a thousand dollars here, we've had to pay 400 to make the trade. So 
our net profit on this deal here, if price doesn't move away from 400, is the maximum we can get, which is here, which is 600 dollars because we get zero for that zero for that a thousand back but it's cost us 400 and if we worked the other way the other way of looking at it is to say okay well we bought that 30 put uh for a hundred dollars it's now worth zero so we've lost a hundred dollars we sold these uh, 40 puts for eight hundred dollars we've received that that's great um and we bought that 50 put for 1100 um but we get a thousand back so we've we've only made uh we've sorry we've lost a hundred haven't we on that deal so you can see that it's 800 minus that 100 minus that 100 gives us the 600 maximum profit and let's put a plus in there to make that clear okay so that's what happens if we're at 40 what about if the stock moves up to 50 let's see what happens then are the 40 puts going to be worthless again because we're going to sell something we'll have to we have the right to sell something below the current price no dice same with the 30 and same with the 50s guys they're all worthless as well so what does that mean for us it means that unfortunately because all these expire worthless we're going to lose our full 400 dollars and if you can see by working that back out the the 30 dollar put is worth is worthless so we've lost 100 dollars the, the 40 puts we get the 800 back for that well, that's that's okay because they expire at zero and we were technically short on those but we've lost that 1100 there so it's just that sum there working out giving us the 400 so we lose 400 there and you can see how no matter how high the price goes these puts are going to be worthless. They're going to be priced at zero. So it doesn't matter if this price goes up to a, a thousand, you still have no value on those. So that sum's still going to be the same. So you can see that this is where we cap the risk to the upside. Let's have a look now what happens on the $30 strike price. So the $40 puts, what are they worth? They're worth $10. The right to sell something at 40 is at 30, 10 bucks times by the hundred, $1,000 per contract. We've got two contracts there. So come back to that in a second. The $30 puts, worthless obviously $50 puts have got $20 worth of value they're worth 2,000 each times by that 100 shares per contract okay so what where does that leave us now the $30 puts we can cross that off we've already paid 100 bucks for those I'm going to put it on this on the uh, board here as I'm doing this one so minus $100 on that what about these $40 puts we sold those and we received $800 in however we have to pay out a thousand dollars per put right because we've sold these and now they're worth a lot more and we didn't expect that because really selling some selling a put is bullish so we paid 400 each we've happened to lose 600 on each of those so 1200 so that's minus our 1200 okay but the 50 dollar puts were our savior here because we paid 1100 for them they're worth 2000 we've only got one of those don't forget 900 so the total of that is minus uh, 400, which is exactly what we'd expect is our maximum loss because we've got 900 minus the 1200 minus the $100 it gives us minus 400, which is what we expect. And no matter how low you go, it's always going to be that. Okay, so where's our break even on this deal? Let's have a look. So we can easily work out a break even by seeing the highest put that we bought, which was $50, and taking off the price, the total price we paid for the whole deal, which was $4. Don't think it's 400 divided by the 100, four. So our break even to the upside is $46. And what we'll do is we'll check that out in a second. But also the break even to the downside is we take the lowest put that we bought and we add what we paid for the deal, $4. So 30 plus the four, 34. That's our break even point. Let's just run through the maths and check it and see that we're right with that. So the $40 puts, what are they worth at 46? They're worthless. The $30 puts, again, they're worthless. What about the $50 puts? Well, $50 puts have got $4 worth of value. The right to sell something at 50 is at 46. $4 worth of value times by the one times by 100 gives us $400. But how does that work with what we paid for stuff? Well, we could easily work out and say, well, as 400 is what we get is what the whole value of all the options are. And we've paid 400 so that's zero. But if we want to drill down a little bit more and double check, we can say, okay, the 40 puts here, they're zero, but we sold those. So we're getting 800 bucks uh, profit on that. What about the 30 puts? Well, we paid 100 for those, so we've lost all of that because they're worthless. That's minus 100. So I've got a plus 700 here. Okay, now what have we got? Oh, we've got the 50 puts, don't forget, and they're worth 400, but we paid 1100 for that. Uh, so we've lost 700 on that deal, minus that 700, uh, and that gives us a grand total of zero. So we can check we're at break even, and we know that's the break even price to the upside, uh, and the same to the downside, adding that four to the 30, give us 34. So this is something that we would trade if, again, if we thought the price would not move. You can see we've got protection to the downside, but we've capped our risk. 
um, which is kind of the, the way that you're constructing this is you want to cap your uh, downside, but the, the opposite of that is that you are capping uh, your upside as well. But that's the way with options, guys. You Sometimes you, you've got to choose commercially what suits you, A, for your trade thesis, and B, for your risk perspective. Anyway, guys, that's the long put butterfly. Take care, whatever you're up to. See you next one. Bye-bye.